opening hymn, number 652, Praise to You, O Christ our Savior, number 652. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear sisters and brothers, welcome to this celebration of the Eucharist. As we enter into this celebration, let us acknowledge our unworthiness and plead for God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you were hand to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call the sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Our God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, Give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. The first reading, a reading from the book of prophet Isaiah. In the days of Ahaz, king of Judah, son of Jotham, son of Uzziah, Rezin, king of Aram, and Pekah, king of Israel, son of Ramaliah, went up to attack Jerusalem, but they were not able to conquer it. When word came to the house of David that Aram was encamped in Ephraim, the heart of the king and the heart of the people trembled as the, as the trees of the forest tremble in the wind. Then the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out to meet Ahaz. You and your son share Jeshub at the end of the country of the upper pool on the highway of the fullest field and said to him, Talk Take care, you remain tranquil and do not fear. Let not your courage fail before these two stumps of smoldering brands, the blazing anger of Rezin and the Amerians, and of the son of Ramalia, because of the mischief that Aram plots against you, saying, Let us go up and tear Judah asunder, make it our own by force, and appoint the son of Tabil, king there. Thus says the Lord, this shall not stand, it shall not be. 
Damascus is the capital of Aram, and Resin is the head of Damascus. Samaria is the capital of Ephraim, and Ramelia's son, the head of Samaria. But within 60 years and five, Ephraim shall be crushed, no longer a nation. Unless you are faith the fame, you shall not be fame. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew.
Jesus began to reproach the towns where most of his mighty deeds had been done, since they had not repented. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would long ago have repented in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. And as for you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You will go down to the Netherlands. For if the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon, my dear friends. In today's first reading, the last, the closing statement, the sentence that we have from the first reading is very interesting. The God says, if you do not stand fame in, fame in faith, you shall not stand at all. I repeat, if you do not stand fame in faith, you shall not stand at all. My dear friends, this is a warning to the Israelites because of their disloyalty, unfaithfulness towards the Lord, Lord is giving them this warning. But then it is not simply a warning alone, but rather an invitation for them to repent and to come back. An invitation for the people of God who have been richly blessed by God. They have been specially chosen by him, and then he had entered into a covenant with them, saying, I will be your God and you will be my people. But unfortunately, unfortunately, they had gone away from God. They had deserted him and then they had gotten into their own evil ways. That's why God had to tell them this. If you do not stand firm in faith, you shall not stand at all. Yes, my dear friends, the same mood is being continued in today's gospel passage where Jesus is bemoaning these three Galilean cities, Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum, where he had done mighty deeds. It's very ironical that people of Israel were waiting for the Messiah for long. They were waiting for the arrival of the kingdom of God. But unfortunately, when the kingdom of God was est being established amidst them through the personality of Jesus, when the kingdom of God was breaking through the words and deeds of Jesus amidst them, they miserably failed to recognize him. They miserably failed to accept him, to acknowledge him, and to be with him rather than Rather, they were so very indifferent towards him. That's what caused Jesus to bemoan these three towns. My dear friends, of course we know from the teachings of the prophets, the signs of the kingdom, where Jesus himself, at the beginning of his public ministry in the fourth chapter of Luke, says, yes, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. It has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor, to give sight to the blind, to establish the kingdom here on earth, to announce the acceptable time of the Lord. Yes, my dear friends, these are the signs of the kingdom. And then these signs were very much visible in the person of Jesus amidst these people of this, these three towns especially especially in Capernaum, where many of his mighty deeds were performed. People were indifferent towards him, and that anguished him. My dear friends, this passage invites all of us also to reflect about the quality of our response to the unfolding of God's will in and around us. 
even today the will of god is being manifest to us through various media through the scriptures through the happenings that take place around around us and most importantly through the mystery of the most holy eucharist the will of the father is manifested it is unfolding before us the question before us is how well do we recognize the presence of the lord how well do we respond to the invitation of the lord much has been given to us even beyond what we deserve even beyond what we need god has been so graciously giving everything that we need but then how are we responding to the manifestations of god's goodness and mercy in and through the things that take place around our lives let us pause and reflect as jesus invites us to follow him we turn our hearts and minds to our merciful father and present our petitions to him for our holy church may the lord mend the wounds of sin and abuse and bring healing and justice let us pray to the lord for elected and appointed leaders may god give them eyes to see those in need and hearts to serve them first let us pray to the lord for those who lack adequate housing or shelter may the lord protect and sustain them let us pray to the lord for this community of worshipers may god's love bind us more closely to each other and bring relief to many who are suffering in our midst let us pray to the lord for all who have passed away in the hope of eternal life especially lourdes snacker and adler and jennifer scott for whom this mass is offered may they soon find peace and joy in god's presence in heaven let us pray to the lord Almighty and eternal God in your infinite mercy please hear our prayers and answer them according to your holy will we ask through Christ our lord amen
Pray brothers and sisters that my suggestion and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took the bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of all sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert Brennan, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. 
have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed virgin mary mother of god with the blessed joseph her spouse with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased to you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Dear friends, God is our merciful Father. Let us call upon him in the words Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray from every evil. graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ lord jesus christ who said to your apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever the peace of the lord be with you always let us offer each other the sign of peace peace be with you peace be with you peace be with you Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ Please join in our communion hymn which can be found at number 911 Let us break bread together number 911 
let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ, the Mass is ended. Which can be found in number 699, Christus Paradox, number 699.